In this video, I'm gonna walk through everything you need to know about connecting your Bubble app with Google Maps API keys. I'll explain the exact step-by-step -step instructions you need to follow in order to not only set up your API keys, configure them correctly, but then of course, get them running well and smoothly inside of your Bubble app. Now look, this is a fairly straightforward process, but there are a few specific nuances that I need to cover along the way. So why don't we just grab our Bubble editor and we can jump right into it. When it comes to our tutorial today, the first thing I've done is actually just create a checklist of all of the items that I'm going to cover and walk you through. Now, I just use a tool called Notion, which allows me to create this checklist. I think it's great because you can just check items off as you actually walk through the steps. And look, I'll be sure to include a link to this checklist in the description of this video, so that way you can make a copy of this and follow along with me. Now, the very first thing at the top of my checklist is to just quickly cover why on earth you need to source your own Google Maps API keys in the first place. So if you're ever building a bubble application that entails a map feature or something to do with an address or a location, what you'll find is that sooner rather than later, you're probably going to receive an email from bubble telling you that your app has been rate limited. And so in simple terms, what's happening behind the scenes is bubble is actually allowing you to use their API keys for Google maps in the beginning. They're going to give you a couple of free requests that you can make and they're going to be completely on the house. But sooner rather than later, because you're using Bubble's API keys, they're the ones paying for it. So they're going to instruct you to set up your own API keys instead. So that way you can start paying for your own Google Maps address experiences. And traditionally in the past, whenever you created an app, you'd sometimes see some issues in your issue checker and it would straight away tell you to add in your own Google Maps API keys. But an easy way to tell if you have your own API keys or not is just by heading over to your settings inside of your app and opening up the general tab. And if you scroll all the way down, I've scrolled up, but if you scroll all the way down here, you'll see this menu known as the general services API keys. And here there's two empty fields. And these are where you can add in your Google Maps API keys. Now Bubble has a great link to some documentation which explains all of the steps involved in actually sourcing your own API keys. But for the sake of our tutorial today, I'm just going to imagine that you're already watching this video. So you don't really want to click through to another link and read another document. You just want to follow me so that way we can get a solution as quickly as possible. And that's what we're going to do. So once you've sourced your own API keys and you have the link to the bubble documentation that I've just shown you, the very first thing you need to do is create your own Google developer account. Now this account is where you're going to create your own API keys. So if you click this link here, or if you just go to console.cloud.google.com, you just need to take a quick moment to create your own Google developer account. So this is where you can source every single API service that Google offers, including of course, Google Maps. And the very first thing you need to do is create a brand new project. Now I'm under the impression that when you actually create an account, it will ask you to set up a project, but if it does not, all you need to do is head up to this little icon here, open this up and you'll see a list of all of your existing projects, which of course, if you have a brand new account, this will be empty. But what you need to do is create a brand new project here and you can call this whatever you want. Most times you'll just call this your app name. I'm going to call mine test app tutorial because this is just my test app for this tutorial. I'm going to then choose to create this and this just might take a little bit of time to fire up behind the scenes, but once it's created, you'll see a notification here and you can select that project or you can go to your projects menu once again and you'll see it now lives within here. So we're going to open that up and I can see that I'm working on my new test app tutorial, which is perfect. So if we just quickly jump back to my notion checklist, I can tick off that we've not only created our own Google developer account, but we've also now created our first app project. And this is where things are going to get exciting. What we need to do is actually create our own API keys. Now within your bubble app, if you head over to the general settings, you'll see that you're actually required to create two different API keys. There's this Google geocode API key and this Google maps API key. So there's two fields that you need to add in here and look, I'll save you the time, but within the bubble documentation, you're required to create two different API keys. One is called the server and the other is called the client. But look, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what you need to do. So in order to create an API key, we need to open up our project, which is great. We then need to open up this navigation menu on the left and head to APIs and services. And we need to go down to the credentials tab. Once you open this, you'll see the option to create credentials. So at this point in time, I have no API keys within this project. So I'm gonna create two. 
So I'm gonna to choose to create credentials. I'm gonna create an API key. And as you'll see, a pop-up will display on the screen and this is your API key. But before we copy this, we need to make some important changes. So I'm actually gonna close this for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and create my second API key. So I'm gonna to choose to create credentials once again. I'll make another API key. This will just take a second to run in the background there. And then our second API key has been created. I'm gonna close this for now because before I copy these API keys, I need to make a couple of changes. So if I select on this API, so this is our API key number one, I'm actually just gonna call this the server API. Now it doesn't really matter which one you call server or client, but you will just need to update the name of this. And there's one other important thing we need to do, and we just wanna restrict this API. So under our application restrictions, we wanna restrict this API to only run on a specific website. And so what do I mean by that? A great example is me right now recording this tutorial. If you've seen my API key, in theory, you could copy and paste my API key and put it into your own bubble app. And then I would be the person who's paying for your API requests. And so in order to stop that from happening, what I can do is set up an application restriction and I can say that this API key should only run on the domain of my application. So that way, even if you put the API key into your app, Google's going to block that from sending requests. So the thing I wanna restrict here is the website in which this API key can run on. I'm then gonna to choose to add a restriction and I just need to paste in the domain of my bubble app. So if I head over to my bubble editor here, I'm gonna to head to my design tab and choose to just run a preview of my app. And once this loads, I'm just going to copy and paste this URL. So I'll close this tab, jump back into Google Developer Dashboard, and I'm gonna paste this in. Now, if I was to paste in this URL here, the API itself would only run on this specific page inside of my app. Whereas I don't really want that to be the case. I want this restriction to apply across any page I create inside of my bubble app. So what I'm gonna do is just grab from the domain itself. So in this example, I've called my app short tutorials 2025.bubbleapps.io. So after this forward slash, I'm going to remove everything from this URL and I'm just gonna add in a little asterisk. And what this little asterisk means is that regardless of whatever page comes after this forward slash in my URL, it will be granted permission to this API. So that's all we need to do when it comes to this exclusion. Now, one thing I will point out is that if you do decide to publish your app on a custom domain, you are gonna need to come back and also add in an additional website for the approval of your API key, because of course your domain itself would change. So you just need to give access to that custom domain. But for now, I'm just going to actually highlight this URL. I'm gonna make a copy of it because I'm gonna paste it into my second API key in a second, but I'm just gonna select that this is done. Then I'm gonna scroll on down and save these changes and it will then revert me back to my API dashboard. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing for our second API key. So I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna call this my client API. I'm gonna to head to my application restrictions, select the website restriction, add a restriction and paste in the same URL that I just copied with a little asterisk at the end. I'll choose done, save this, and then this will revert me back to my dashboard. So that's how we can create our API keys themselves. And now we can copy and paste these over into our bubble app. So I'm gonna to choose to show the API key for my server. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna jump into my bubble editor, head over to my settings, open up my general tab, and scroll all the way down to the general services API key section. And when it comes to these APIs, you need to paste your server API key into the Google Geocode API key section. Now, how do I know which API key goes in which particular field? Because it says this within the bubble documentation. So right down the bottom here, if you just search for the word server, it says paste the server key in the Google Geocode API box. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. I will paste this in here. Then I'm gonna go and grab my client API key. So I'm gonna jump back to my developer dashboard, show that client API key, copy this, head back into bubble and paste that in. And that is all we need to do in terms of actually adding these API keys in. But there is still one important thing we need to do in order to make this functional. And if we head over to my Notion checklist, let's quickly just check off that we've finished creating all of our API keys. 
and we've also pasted those into our bubble app. But this is probably the most important thing about the whole process, and that is that you now need to enable all of the different API services that are required for Bubble to use Google Maps. If you don't do this, you will not be able to pull through any address or street details. Even though you have your API keys, they're pretty much useless at this point in time. So in order to enable all of these different API services, it's actually pretty straightforward. If you head over into the Google Developer Dashboard, we're just gonna close this. At the top, you're gonna see a search bar here. And this is where you just need to type in all of the API keys that I have within this list. So the first one is the geocoding API. I'm going to just paste this in. And you'll see an option here known as the geocoding API. Please make sure you just double check that this is the specific API that you need. Google's gonna throw up a bunch of different options that kinda sometimes look a bit similar. So you just need to double check the actual wording here and also make sure that this is the API. So this looks good to me. So I'm gonna click on this. It's gonna take me through to a separate page. And then what I'm gonna do is enable this API. And that's just gonna take a minute to update. But once it has updated and enabled that on our particular project, it'll then send you back to your main dashboard. Then we can jump into Notion, check off that we've finished enabling that service, grab our second one, so the Places API, head up to our search menu, paste this in, and we're just gonna rinse and repeat the exact same process. And in this case, I'm just gonna grab the Places API here. I'll choose to enable this. It'll then send us back to our dashboard. We'll do the exact same thing for the Geolocation API. I'll paste this in here, select the API itself, then I'm gonna to choose to enable this. Then in our Notion doc, I can see it's the Maps JavaScript API, which is next. So I'll paste this into our search box, select this. Then of course we will enable this service. And then finally we have one last API and that is the Time Zone API. So I'm gonna copy that, add it into this search box. Select the relevant option, and of course, as you probably guessed, we're going to enable this service as well. And once this is sent you back to your dashboard, that is the very last API service that you need to enable. And that's pretty much everything you need to do in order to set up your own Google Maps API keys. But there is one last very important detail that I need to explain, and that is that none of this will work or matter if you don't have one thing set up in your Google Developer account and that is your billing information. Now look, Google is actually quite generous in terms of how many API requests it gives you. So theoretically, while you're actually building your app, you're probably not going to pay for any API requests. You're gonna get thousands of those. But even if you don't have to pay for any API requests, Google will require you to have a billing method on your account. If you do not, none of this will work. They're not going to enable you to use their API services until you have something like a credit card on file that they can potentially charge in case your app does use over the threshold of free API requests. But aside from that, that's absolutely everything I needed to cover within my checklist today. Look, as you can see, it was a pretty straightforward process, but there were a few specific details that we needed to follow just to make sure everything runs smoothly when your bubble app needs to start talking to Google Maps in order to search or even display location information. And just like that, you now know exactly how to connect your Bubble app to the Google Maps API services. This of course is gonna be an essential feature for most modern applications. And you can always use this as a guide that you can come back to at any point in time if you ever get stuck throughout the process. If you found this video useful, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button on my channel so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. For now though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this specific video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.